बहादुर उसकी मदर इन लॉ को लिप टू लिप किस कर रहा है उसका फैन से किसी और लड़की से अफेयर चला रहा है ये मेडन है मैंने Well, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by the Made in Heaven team. So, Arjun, Jim, Trinetra, and Ishwak, a warm welcome to all of you, and a huge congratulations on the second season. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Anuj. Thanks, Anuj. Wonderful. So, Jim, I am actually going to begin with you. Uh, okay. I think for me, it's really fascinating to see uh, Adil's character <laughs> sort of, uh, you know, unveiling more layers than what we saw in the first season. So, for you as an actor to really get your uh you know teeth into this character how how fun was it i guess to work on this yeah it was yeah it was very fun uh fun because of the theme and it was lovely to work with in the first season nitya and zoya and uh, uh-huh. prashant 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 nair and alankrita um uh great directors open to discussions want to kind of find the meat and the rhythm of the scene so that was that was a lot of fun um i think the for the first season i had come off doing uh padmavat and sanju and uh, before that uh, another film and there were a period and set in a particular time and it was quite refreshing to just come into very normal speak day to day conversation zone for made in heaven and for other and right? yeah, um, arjun has spoken a couple of times on these interviews about how you know you can really be more instinctive in this uh, with play, with being in the made in heaven situation even though he said that's his approach in general but it's true in the made in heaven situation you can be a bit more instinctive because the lines aren't really complicated or in a dialect and even in sanju i was lisping and so so much of my focus was going on making sure those things were being kept mm. uh clean and 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 true whereas here it is the way that i wouldn't i i i naturally it doesn't take much of a change in how i speak in order to kind of get to Adil so yeah i had a great time i had a great time it was like the most uh relaxing or cleansing uh set because it just felt like i could draw on natural strengths mm wonderful it's so great to hear that and i think yeah the times definitely do reflect I think the mindset and the approach one has especially when it comes to the art and i think Arjun uh we did an interview i think some time back actually i think just bang in lockdown and i mm. was we had spoken at length about you know you know you paying a character who is obviously from the lgbtqia community like myself um so i think for you because here what we're not just seeing where it's where your character is beyond the sexuality it's more about the internal conflict that he's going through and how uh the exterior is basically also in in conflict too so for you to really delve into the emotions of it i mean how emotionally taxing was it for you not i mean not any more or less than any other character to be honest you know because uh, like he said the emotion these are we're just dealing with feelings you know it's a like feelings are a very universal they're a human thing not gender based or sexuality based or preference based so uh yeah it it was what it was the scenes were um yeah i mean just human conflict so i mean um n- not really the emo- an emotional scene is taxing generally i think for any part that it's been done for you know that particular day leaves you a little more tired and a little but also a little like almost feeling high and elated from the experience you've had on set and the release you've had you know so in i would in fact say on the contrary it's quite uh, it's quite an emotional release because actors me at least and i'm sure many more use their on set experiences to like catharsize our own <laughs> pent up feelings you know so mm. yeah it can be a release not not a burden yeah yeah but i think you know i think the way the characters have been written is so 
sensitively done. Uh, I think, when, especially when it comes to the LGBTQIA rep as well. Yeah. Um, because I think, again, Arjun, like, like you said as well, I think for you to also, I mean, like you said, it's just like any other character. But, you know, I, I do also feel sometimes cis or straight uh, actors often, you know, use the whole sexuality aspect just to kind of gain clout rather than actually trying to, um, you know, be compassionate towards the community and actually, you know, empathize with what the character is going through. So how conscious has that been at the back of your mind when playing this role? You know, you might be speaking of the situation outside India, but in India, um, for decades now, our representation has not, has been very off the mark, you know. Um, no, I didn't have to be conscious at all because, to be honest, it wasn't even, there was, uh, that was not a risk that was being taken at all because the idea with this character was never to uh, approach it in any way except as a human and very male and masculine and everything. He's just, uh, you know, he doesn't wear his sexual preference on his face, you know. So, um, so that was the approach really. Uh, like the one thing Zoya had said to me, I remember before we began season one, and this was pretty much the only brief she had. Here's this guy who every girl would want to sleep with him, but he wants to sleep with men too bad. That's it. You know? Mm. So yeah, it's just, uh, that's, that's how it's played. Mm -hmm. And I think if there's, a, if there's one actor who I'm extremely proud of, I think it's Sunetra. I think you were exceptional in the series. I mean, as all of you were. But for me, Trinetra, you really did, you know, you left a huge mark. And I would like to congratulate <laughs> you. Such a huge Thank you so much. To finally see Indian cinema casting for a, tra a trans person for a trans role. I cannot tell you how much of a sigh of relief it is. Uh, but I think a lot of the things yeah. that we see that your character goes through, there are many situations that are very rampant, in not only India, mein, but even abroad. Transphobia, ko le lo. Um, mm. Again, the whole gender, the gender, you know, politics that goes into it, the capitalism, the elitism, so many different, different aspects. So, Sunitra, mm. uh, for you to really, uh, you know, play this character, how much of a real personal uh, reference did you have to really go through and introspect on in playing this role? Mm. So, I think something that I remember telling Zoya also the first time we met was that in a lot of ways, Meher is very aspirational also in the sense that, you know, she is someone that has a very successful job. Uh, you know, she's been at this for a while and you can tell um, she's got family that's very understanding and accepting. She's got a sibling that she's, you know, a good elder sister to. And she also finds love. I mean, you know, in so many ways, um, the show is making her somebody that has access to everything that is this person uh, can have and should have access to, but you also see the transphobia. So for me, it was, and I was also very young <laughs> when I came across the, the script, I was 23 years old. Um, and so for me, it was a little daunting, to be honest, because I'm like, I don't know if I have the lived experience necessarily to, um, to, you know, just draw from that alone. And I also don't have necessarily the experience of an actor to uh, put this character together. So it it was daunting, but at the same time, I feel like when we really broke it down scene by scene, it was just human emotion. Um, and that is what I take away from the whole thing, that Meher fundamentally is a human being. And she she's having her heart broken. She's going through what any woman would go through also in so many ways. Um, and you just see her be a human being. And I think... Um, you know, without going into too much detail, the the scene where she, there's violence with her and the date that she goes on, for example, mm. it, it hits very close to home. And I was very scared about it because it's all kinds of triggering. And I haven't, you know, been trained to an extent where I'm able to separate and cut off from it completely. Um, and... Uh, but it helped, you know, it helped because I was able to talk to my co-actor in certain scenes and talk about lived experience and make sure that I was feeling safe and still draw from that lived experience anyway, to whatever extent possible. Um, my brother, for example, I was a shit elder brother to him. Okay? I was terrible. <laughs> I was such a bully because 
I was being bullied incessantly. So for me, he was the easy target. And I think this Meher actually saying those things out loud has been strangely healing for the both of us also in real life. So th- there's a lot of, you know, crossover between lived experience and, uh, and Meher. And I think that's beautiful. And Zoya deserves so much credit for opening herself up and her work up like that um, to tell the right kind of story. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it was, it was, it was quite, uh, it, it bothered me a lot, you know, Trinitra, and I'm sure it must have bothered <coughs> me as well. Because when it comes to, like, again, the representation that we've had, I mean, last year, there was a beautiful film that released called Joyland, uh, in which mm. obviously, oh I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but it is I have, I have. Yeah. So I watched it thrice. <laughs> I watched it thrice. Yeah, me yeah. too. <laughs> So, you know, it was bothering me for the longest amount of time. We mm. were talking about such roles and often straight mm. actors play them. And I, that's fine. And I understand that as an actor's job, mm. it is to play different roles. But mm. you know, w- why do you think this representation was lacking? Uh, you know, and, and going forward, what do you think will give more commercial filmmakers that confidence to, to really back more and cast more LGBTQIA plus actors in those specific roles too and more? Right. What will give them the confidence? I think just the more work that is done now and uh, the more you see that, okay, something's out and it's doing well. And I think that is what gives people the confidence that, okay, this will work. Because with Made in Heaven in particular, I love the fact that there is so much happening. There are such powerful stories being told at the same time that it's not, you know, the, the, the transness of Meher is not the focus of her story and the episodes in general, you know. Mm. It's important and it's there, but there's so much happening and such important things happening that it works. All of it just comes together. And I think people just need to realize that there's smart ways of incorporating trans narratives and queer narratives um, in mainstream storytelling and still make it work, right? There is this narrative that, okay, this is not family friendly that if there is a queer character automatically it's going to be about sex it's going to be like you know about all of that that's not necessarily true i feel like people do need to realize that various stories can be told about queer people i don't know if we're allowed to name names uh sorry i'm just going to say that you know i think it's also not to kind of get uh a sort of uh uh not repulse but like even say that in the narrative, if you're showing sex, whether it's straight or uh, heterosexual, homosexual, or, you know, uh, Mm. any other, you know, person, irrespective of gender, sexuality, that is also normalizing it, which is so important, I think. And it's not like, you know, you you stay away from uh, those scenes. If if it's there, it's there because it's, it's, uh, it's very much, it's very much normal. It's very much a part of our society. Yeah. And and people better be okay with it. I think it's, what's the big deal about it? Mm. Yeah. The, yeah. the other truth is, I don't think worldwide um, uh, in big commercial films, trans characters are being uh, cast as much yet in general. I mean, they're usually in the more indie space like Joyland. You know, Joyland True. isn't a commercial film in Pakistan. You know, True. It's a yeah. very indie film, the festival circuit kind of film. So the fact that the step has gone with Made in Heaven to put it in a very commercial, commercially viable show that's designed for the largest possible audience um, is a great step. And yeah, it's oh, incredible. Yeah. I mean, that was the, oh, yeah. in Barbie. There was a trans Barbie in Barbie. Did you all? Yeah. True. I haven't watched Barbie yet. Mm-hmm. Not I watched saw. it yet. Yeah. I've got to watch it. It was yeah. amazing. I mean, oh, yeah, awesome. I'm sure. to see a trans Barbie up there, it's just like, wow this movie is as mainstream as it gets right and to see that kind of rep happening that i think that is also something that gives filmmakers in india a little more confidence that okay this is happening elsewhere and it's working and um there are audiences that will be pulled um who will enjoy this then we can be doing it too and i think that's something that again zoya has done so well she's incorporated so much audience feedback from season one into two Mm. I, I love that. Mm. So you uh, in uh, clad in Sabhyasachi sari might just happen because you put it out there. <laughs> I'm manifesting it. 
Right. Yeah, no. Uh, so I think the reason why I asked about the whole commercial aspect, because I think what Shivana Ji had also said when we did an interview is that, you know, if you are to put out a social message or to really uh, awaken, try to awaken at least society, it has to be done through the medium of commercial cinema. Because, you know, like mm-hmm. indie space, as you said, Jim, you know, it's almost like preaching to the converted already. But I think with the landscape changing now of Hindi commercial cinema, I mean, even if you look at Rocky Rani, the amount of commentary it makes on social society, it's phenomenal. And I'm so glad to see that movement happening. But I think going forward now, uh, you know, even if we as a society awaken, what do you think it will be the role of art, I think, going forward, rather than just to entertain and, you know, have social messaging, what can, will be the next essential step? It's a bit of a hypothetical question, but I think it would be nice to get your views. Ishwa, do you know? I think to, to begin with, to be uh, serve its own purpose, whether it's architecture, whether it's fine arts, whether it's <laughs> sculpture, that, that craft needs to be advanced. Filmmaking, writing, the craft of writing, the craft of filmmaking, uh, acting, uh, advancing with technology, you know, uh, all of that um, with its times. But uh, in terms of social context, I think cultural context, it needs to represent, uh, be representative of its time, be contemporary in that sense that, you know, I kind of, if I watch a film uh, that is quintessentially uh, of the times, you know, when I was born, I would, it should take me back in time. I should smell that air. I should feel it. I should know. Mm-hmm. And and not and a personal choice would be, you know, if it's not in the face, if it's not always like a, coming across as a documentary or a commentary, but, you know, good storytelling, like reading a, the kind of pleasure, joy that you get out of a, watching a good movie or reading a book. In, um, I mean, I don't think any of this is new. I think it's something that has constantly been cycled and recycled since the beginning of storytelling. Um, you know, if we go back to the original forms of so- storytelling, it was often folk tales around a uh, campfire. And the whole point of them was social messaging, right? It was a, it was a way to live. It was a way, it was a way to tell the culture. It was a way to tell the values of a society, you know, that has always been the role of storytelling to a certain extent in addition to being extremely entertaining and keeping the person engaged, of course, because if they ain't engaged, they aren't learning anything, you know, that's, that's just that simple. Um, so I don't think it's any kind of new thing and that we're, we're along a step process to evolve to some other step. I think it'll always be a cycle of essentially this, of course, Wherever we are in our evolution, I would really prefer to watch more um, films and series that uh, don't give me answers, but just ask me more questions. Um, Now, of course, in a situation where perhaps um, everybody's ability to answer those questions changes based on their life situation, the quality of education, the experiences that they've had over a large sociopolitical sphere, it, it, it changes, right? So I can understand the tendency to veer towards telling somebody as opposed to asking questions because you don't know how much um, you can trust in the finding of those answers. But ideally, our society continues to improve in all kinds of ways, especially education-wise, where we trust that the audience will be able to accept the question and then come to their own answers. And we have to be open to that back and forth. That, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, Arjun, would you like to add that? And then I might just get your comment as well. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be nice to get your comment. Arjun, would you like to add to maybe what Jim, saw, uh, Jim said about uh, watching films that actually make you ask questions rather than giving you answers. Yeah, I very much agree. Look, art, I think, uh, was always and always meant to inspire and was always meant to, uh, you know, hold up a mirror, just reflect. Art was always meant to reflect, you know, a society or a human emotion um so and even revolt art is even uh, meant to revolt you know so yeah i think it's just got to keep doing that 
uh, and we got to keep trying to uh, use art to to do that because there's simply no stronger uh, there's just nothing stronger that that can resonate with the human heart than art uh, you know in terms of like just getting people on the same page or wavelength you know yeah i think something i realized over the course of you know this project at least is that there was a time that you would feel like a trans person playing a trans character or a queer person playing a queer character is the end all and be all but then you realize that an actor really doesn't have all that much control at all in this world right and much as i was very fortunate um in this project to have access to a script that was so well fleshed out unfortunately there have been many auditions after where you know i was just like oh, what is this <laughs> why <laughs> um and it just makes you it just it, you know you feel like until queer and trans people or just people from minorities in general exist across every sphere of filmmaking it's very difficult to really tell authentic stories until you get as lucky as this you know being part of a project where people are genuinely committed to it that's unfortunately not the case at large so this is a baby step in the right direction yes but speaking of the future i would personally i would love to learn screenwriting i would love to put things down um from the other side of the camera you know and see uh what 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 can be done like for example i grew up watching grey's anatomy right like it's one of the things that inspired me to get into medical school i you know medical school is nothing like grey's anatomy <laughs> at all mm-hmm. uh, but that said i've always wanted to write a medical drama for example right which um where you have a hospital that's the playground for different characters and different um social prejudices etc and i really want to make that happen at some point but i i want to build the skills for it first um because i understand the literacy of the medical world fairly well and i think i'd be able to create something cool so yeah i mean i'd like to see trans people queer people doing lots of things in this world yeah and it's really really sure and it's really reassuring because we also have Ghazal as well who's a wonderful writer as well who's on great work yeah. so i think it's wonderful to yeah. see that happening unfortunately we've run out of time um i i honestly i could have gone on and on and speaking with you guys you guys are so wonderful to chat with but thank you so much jim thank you to thank you Sean. thank you anuj thank you thanks so much on for me show me and a huge congratulations on made in heaven season 2 thank you thank you so much thank you okay.